have that attitude. You must have that, uh, that lifestyle must change. It will happen. Listen to this. God always honors faith. Now we shall learn to talk in the house of the day. Hey, so you may have enough time to dance. Amen. I can see you still want to dance. Amen. But it's time for the way. You can see you want to dance, but you must come early in the house of the Lord. Amen. Just prepare our hearts to receive the word of God. The word of God says that the entrance of the word of God brings light and understanding to the simple. And in the book of Isaiah 60, the Holy of God says that arise for your life has come. The light is in the word of God. When the light comes, the word of God says in the book of Genesis, the Lord said, let there be light and he call it day. When the light comes, your day begins. When the light of God comes, your day begins. Your season begins. So this morning, as you're about to receive the word of God, and that this is the new season of your life that is about to start. this one. 
in Matthew, it was just a kind of a compile, but here he opened it, so I want us to go there. Amen. We are still, and I believe by the grace of God, we finished today. Remember, we've been talking about how to make things happen. We want things to happen in our lives, but things cannot just happen anyhow. Things will happen if you make them happen. You know, if you allow the nature just to, to take his course, it might lead you in the place that you, want, that you don't want to be. It might take you in a place where you are not happy. So you must act on the nature so that you may be where you want to be. Or you may have what you want to have. Or you may receive what you would like to receive. Amen. And we say to make things happen, the world is, has given us a way of doing it, that we need first to have a vision. What you want, you know, something happen. We must know what you want to happen. And then secondly, you must make a plan how to make it happen. And secondly, you must execute that plan. And thirdly, you must do a follow-up to see if everything is going accordingly so that you may correct. But we say for those um, things to go the way the world has made them, three things need to happen inside us. Inside the person who wants things to happen. And we say the first thing we would like, uh, uh, we say we need to do, if we want to see things happening, we need to tell ourselves certain things. Things is not going to happen if you don't tell yourself, if you don't convince yourself, if you don't talk to yourself, if you don't have a meeting with yourself, if you, have, you don't have a self-meeting, so you need to have a self-meeting with yourself and you need to tell things to yourself. Hallelujah. And then the second thing, we learn it last uh, Sunday, we say for things to happen, you must have a revelation of the God who makes things happen. You must have the revelation, you must know that God. You must call him in a certain way. We took the example of uh, uh, this uh, blind man, this blind um, uh, there were two actually, blind men, and we extended it to Bartimaeus, who is what just means son of Timaeus. You know, we say that that guy was so <laughs> forgotten that they even forgot his name. They start calling him about, on the name of his father, a, you know, a son of Timaeus, Bartimaeus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So we say that the second thing that we need to do, we need to have a revelation of Jesus. These two blind men, they did not call Jesus anyhow. They did not even call him Jesus. They called him son of David. They called him in his announcing. It is not in his action. They called him according to what he's supposed to do. He's the son of David. He's supposed to act as a son of David and to take care of the subject of David. When, when they called him in that way, when they had the revelation of him as the son of David, then God, then Jesus, act toward them accordingly. Hallelujah. And we say we need to have a revelation. We just gave ourselves few revelations of who God can be to us who, or who God is to us. The first thing, and I like it, God is the Father. He is our Father. We say that God is our Father. This is a great revelation. There is no religion in the world that has their God as their Father. Christianity is the only one religion whereby God is the Father to the believers. Hallelujah. God is our Father. And it, it, it means a lot. If God is our Father, it means that we are His children. It means, it means that we are His sons and daughters. And it means that we have a privilege, we have a position that nobody has. We are not only the servant of God, we are sons and daughters in the house of God. Amen. The Bible says, Jesus said that servant, they don't remain forever. Servant will leave the house, but the son will remain in the house. The son will even inherit from the house. The son will always come to the house. He can go, but he can come back knowing that this is my house. So God is your father. If you are raising up your hand and God sees that you are, you are looking at him or you are, you are seeing him as your father, he will come to you in another way. If, you, if you, are, you call God as your father, when God comes to you, he comes to you as, to see you as a son. As a daughter, even when you have to punish you, even as a, when you have to beat you, you're not gonna beat you like a servant. Even if, when you have to punish you, he's not gonna punish you as a servant, he's gonna punish you as a son. Wow, what a privilege! What a privilege to call God our father. And I like that 
that song of uh, that moon that said, Our Father who art in heaven, our way be thy name. Oh, our Father. He is our Father. Do you know that God is your Father? When God is your Father, you can do what you call in Lingala the Dizeti. You know? You can say, No, Daddy, I don't want that. You know, my daughter sometimes is, is coming to me and saying, No, Papa, no, Papa, no. Because I am his Father. He cannot go to his head teacher and say, teacher, no, teacher, no, because the teacher is different. But I am the father. So there is a way that he treats me, and there is a way that he treats her. Hallelujah. Amen. So you need to have a revelation who God is for you. How do you see God? If you see him just as a, a very far God who only beats people, remember the, the Bible is giving us a revelation of this, this um. This gentleman who needed to go for a far away um, trip and he gave gift to his servant. He gave to one five, to other one two, and the last one he gave one. And when he came to make them accountable, the last one said, I knew that you are a very harsh man, a harsh master. So if you take God as a harsh master, he will be so harsh to you. If you take God like, you know, God cannot know me, I'm too small, he's not going to know you. As big as God is, he knows you. As big as God is, he knows you. And he's saying in the book of Isaiah, I know you by your name. I am calling you by your name distinctly. God cannot make a confusion when it's, it's, when it's time to call you. He's not going to call you by the name of your brother. He's not going to call you by the name of your sister. He will call you exactly by your name on the, at the time that uh, it is time to be called. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. now, I want to tell somebody this morning. Your blessing will not going to reach a wrong person. Mm -hmm. Your blessing will going to reach you. Mm -hmm. If you see somebody being blessed, it was not meant for you. Mm -hmm. If you see somebody get married, it was not meant for you. Mm -hmm. Wait your time. Because when your time will come, yours will locate you. Mm -hmm. He said, I know you by your name. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make a confusion. Is it you or not you? No. God will, God knows you by name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can somebody say, God knows me? God knows by, my by my name. Are you getting that? Amen. If you have the revelation that God knows me by my name, I'm not going to be worried like anybody else because I know that God knows me. My worry is not going to be like the worry of the world because I know that God knows me. So, knowing God, the revelation of God is important. We spoke about God being El Shaddai. El Shaddai means all-sufficient God. It means all-sufficient God. It means all-sufficient God. God is El Shaddai. He's all-sufficient. There is nothing that he cannot do for you. There is nothing you can come to God and God is struggling. He tells you, no, go back, you know, let me try to find out if I get it. No, he is all-sufficient God. He told Abraham, our father, he said, I am El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God. There is nothing you'll come to me that I will struggle to provide for you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you have that revelation of that God? Yeah. Like when you come to him, there is nothing you can struggle to do. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely nothing you can struggle to give you. There is nothing that he can struggle to provide for you. Because he is El Shaddai, all-sufficient God. God does not need anything. God doesn't need your help. God doesn't need you to help him for him to provide. God, maybe let me take some pills. He doesn't need pills to heal you. No. He doesn't need a doctor to heal you. No. He doesn't need anything to help you. No. He has it enough to help you. Are you getting that? Yeah. God has it enough to help you. He doesn't need a person. Don't think that, okay, maybe if I work in this company and I get this kind of salary, then things going to change. God does not need your salary to make you rich. God does not need your salary to make you richer. God does not need your salary to make you richer. He can make you rich from nowhere. God is God. When God says it, it is settled. When God says it, it is settled. When God says it, it is settled. Beloved, we just need God's word. We just need God's approval. When we have God's approvals, men will come around. Yeah. When you go approve on men will come around. They'll come around. You let them go, they'll come around. Amen. They will come around because the word of God is a law. Amen. When God says it, it becomes a law. 
that everybody has to abide to. Even Satan abides to the law of God. Even everyone, kings, great people, rich people, poor people, they abide by the law of God. And we say also that God, you need to have the revelation of him as being Elohim. Elohim means the maker of everything. Elohim means the maker of everything. God is the maker of everything. God is the maker. He can make your womb. He can make your eyes. He can make your liver. He, can make, he is the maker of everything. The Bible says there is nothing that was made was made without him. Everything that exists, exists by him. So there is nothing that you can see that you can think that God does not have any knowledge about it. Everything that exists, God has knowledge about it. He has knowledge about the mechanic. He has knowledge about electricity. He has knowledge about chemistry. He has knowledge about mathematics. He has knowledge about science. He has knowledge about everything. I told you sometime, I'm repairing, I'm repairing my car by prayer. I put my hand on the car and say, God, you are Elohim. You have knowledge of everything. You are the mechanic of mechanic. I put my hand on my car. Whatever's wrong, let it be repaired. God is the mechanic. God is the healer. God is the doctor. God is the gynecologist. God is whoever you want him to be. He's the lawyer. He's whoever you want to be. Because he is Elohim. Do you think that people can make things that can complicate God? Whatever it is made, those people are making it just by the small intelligence that God has given to them. If you are struggling in chemistry, pray God will give you inside of that chemistry. Kids who are struggling with mathematics, I know South African kids, we don't like mathematics. But let me tell you, if you are struggling, you can ask God, give me the inside of mathematics. Do you know Peter God? There is a theorem called theorem of Peter God. Peter God is a human being who was created by God. God is more intelligent than him. God is more intelligent than even a pair who made this light. God is more intelligent than, than, than Isaac Newton who made the law of gravity. God is intelligent with Torricelli and all those scientists that you may know. So whatever they discover, that's why they call them they're just discovering. Yeah. It means that it was there. They just, somebody came and said that the air has weight. They call it barometric pressure, the weight of the air. But in the book of Job, God is speaking about, is speaking about the, 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 the weight of the air. Job said, were you there when God was giving a heaviness to the air? He was already speaking about the barometric pressure. All the things that you are finding were discovering, discovering him. So you, when you have the revelation of Elohim, when you call him, you call him different. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And today we're going to finish. The third thing we need to have for us to make things happen, it is short. It's called faith. We need faith for things to happen. We need faith for things to happen. If you want to make things happening, you need to have faith. You need to have faith, and let me be clear, faith in God. Faith in God means faith in his word. Faith is just trust. We're going to define it right now. Now listen to this. If you go through the Bible, you will learn that every time God was doing something to somebody, faith was required. Every time God was intervening, was entering, was stepping in people's matters, he needed faith to be brought first. And God has made everything available for us. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says, he blessed us with all kinds of blessing, spiritual blessing in the heavenly place. I always say, this scripture is the raw material. This scripture is the raw material, is the masterpiece of whatever you want. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 is a raw material. A raw material, you can have it, but it's not going to serve you until you transform it. I can give you a wood as a raw material, but if you don't transform the wood, it's not going to become a table. Yeah. So the process of transforming, transforming the wood to the table, it is faith. You get I me? Mean? Yeah. Raw material. So we have all kinds of blessings, but God decided that for you to access those blessings, you need to access them through faith. And faith pleases God. 
The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. The Bible says that without faith we cannot please God. Faith pleases God. If you do not have faith, you will not going to please God. God is not going to be pleased with you. God is not going to be happy with you. It's like when we say, let all wear red, and you do not wear red, they're going to be a problem. We will, you, are, you are breaking the harmony. Yeah. So the same thing. When you come to God with that faith, God is not going to be pleased with you. Remember, Jesus gave us a parable of this man who was organizing a big party. And then he invited, he said, the, the first people that he invited refused. Then he said, go on the street and take everybody and let them come. But there was a criteria. He said they must wear the cloth of the party or the party cloth. But the Bible said there was one man who entered in the party without the cloth. And then the owner of the, the party came and see, said to him, who has allowed you to enter here without the cloth? How did you even enter here? He said, take him out of the place because he does not have the cloth of the party. The cloth of the party is called faith. Faith is what I make you to access the presence of God. That makes you access the with what God has for you. Amen. God has things for each and every one of us. We can only access them through faith. <coughs> faith is a currency that is used to purchase things in God's kingdom. Faith is a currency, is the money. Faith is the, the, the notes that we can use to buy things. If you enter in the kingdom of God, in the marketplace of the kingdom of God, the money you have to use there, the currency you have to use there to purchase things in the kingdom of God, that currency is called faith. If you want to obtain things in the presence of God, you obtain them by faith. If you want to buy whatever you want to buy in the kingdom of God, you buy them through faith. So if you do not have faith, you cannot receive anything from God. Faith is important. And faith comes from hearing. Faith comes from hearing. Faith comes from hearing. Faith comes from hearing. Comes from hearing. But I like the word of God. In Romans chapter 10 verse 17. The word of God is so perfect that God did not want us to stop there. Faith comes from hearing. Because if we say faith comes from hearing, we can go and hear anything. Faith does not just come by hearing. It comes by hearing. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. Every message that you hear will create faith in you. But be careful. Because here... Faith that we need to obtain things from God must not just be any kind of faith. It must be a specific faith. That's why he said, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message that will bring us the faith. Because there are people that say that, Pastor, I have faith. But you do not have the appropriate faith. You have a wrong faith. You do not have the faith that is required. Beloved, I went to Nigeria and then we went to the shop with my wife. We wanted to buy a SIM card. When we arrived there, we were having rent in our pocket. And then we give them rent. They said, no, we don't need rent. We need, what is the currency? Naira. Naira. We need Naira. Now we needed to go, we had money, but it was not an appropriate money. We have faith. But it was not an appropriate faith to buy things in that environment. Am I making sense to somebody? Amen. You know, there are people who are having trust, but they're having a wrong trust. Because they got it from a wrong source. They got it from a wrong place. They got it from a wrong message. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible is clear, so that you may have a genuine faith. Because there are people who have faith, but it's not a genuine faith. My aim this morning is to help you to have the genuine faith that's going to help you to receive things or to buy things in the market of the kingdom of God. Amen. We went there and then we did not have money. So we needed a, a friend who was also coming from, actually we're not even coming from South Africa, from another country. But in fact, what if we don't have, oh, let me give you. So we needed to change our money. 
to put it in Naira so that you can be able to buy. I pray for you for your faith to change now. To have a true faith that can help you to buy in the market of the kingdom of God. And the Bible said, faith comes from hearing the message. But the message is heard through the word about Christ. In other versions, it said, the word of God. The faith that can help you to have a proper currency to do transactions in the kingdom of God, that faith might come from the word of God. Must come from listening the word of God. Must come from reading the word of God. Must come from reading the Bible, meditating the Bible. Must come from hearing the testimonies. When we hear the word of God, you hear the preaching like you and me, we are hearing this morning, and we read the Bible, it will create a certain trust in us. Faith is a kind of trust that comes from your heart from what you have been hearing or what you've been told or what you've been seeing. Hallelujah. Amen. What your, sen your five senses are apprehending will create a certain faith in you, a certain trust in you. If you only see certain things, it will create a certain trust in you from what you're seeing. If you are seeing people failing, 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 and failing at that time, but of that particular test, you will end up thinking that it is impossible for somebody to make it. If you ever heard somebody telling you, you've been, I've been around for 30 years. I've never seen somebody making this. So it creates a kind of trust in him that this is impossible until somebody will come and do something different. There are things that you think that you think, you think that they are impossible. It is just because you have been ex exposed to the failure of those things. You have been exposed only to people who are failing. You have been exposed only to people who did not make it. That's why I tell my children, do not be friends with the failures. Do not be friends with people who are failing. Be friends with the successful men as much as you can. Because they want to give you the insight of success. I remember my first year in university. We entered there and we found people were repeating, repeating the year. They started telling us when a lecturer will enter, they say, ah, this guy, you can study the way you want, you're not gonna make it. No, it started affecting me. It started making me to have a certain attitude toward those people. Then I realized, no, I can't be here because those people are failures. If they fail, they were also people who passed who are in the other class. Why did people pass? So if these people fast, passed, it means that this particular subject, it is possible to make it. In my entire time I was at the varsity, I've never been friend to the famous. I choose who to be friend to. Listen to me, and listen to me carefully. Your um, role or your obligation is to love everyone. It is not your obligation to make everyone your friend. Many people are thinking, oh no, God, you know, if I, I don't make the God, no. God never said make everyone friend. God said love everyone. I love you, but I don't need to, put you, to make you my friend. Because I want my friend to be those who are catapulting me above, not those who are pulling me down all the time. So you must choose your friends very well. And the Bible said in the book of 1 Corinthians that uh, bad company. That's what? Corrupt good manners. So I love you, but I don't necessarily need to be your friend. There is nothing with you. I don't hate you. But I realize that you and me, friendship is not good. Make sure that you love the person. That is what you owe everyone. It is love. You don't, you don't owe everyone friendship. Now when I say you don't, know everyone, you don't owe everyone friendship, it doesn't mean you don't greet people. When you look at him, Pastor says, I should not tell your friend. Don't even greet me. No, I'm not talking about that. Don't take me away. Don't take me wrong. What I'm saying, be with them good. If they ask you service, give them. If you ask, they ask you help, give them. But do not put them closer to you. There's a man of God who was telling me, Pastor, love them all, but don't trust them. Yes. <laughs> love them all, but don't trust them. Love them, 
But be careful when it comes to trusting. You must be careful. And it's true. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the living God. So, what you are hearing will determine the kind of trust you're going to have. Will build your faith. That's why what you hear is so important. Come with me in the book of Mark chapter 5, verse 22, 24. Let's see this gentleman, what he went through. And then we're going to define faith. Mark, can you please put it there already for us? Now, listen to this. There are three kinds of faith. Let me quickly say this. There are three kinds of faith. There is the first kind of faith, which is faith to be saved. Faith that God requires for you to have salvation. And the second faith is the faith that you need to have to obtain things from God. And the third faith is the faith which is considered as the entire doctrine of Jesus Christ. When the Bible says they have lost faith, it doesn't mean they don't trust God anymore. It means that they are no longer in the truth. They are no longer walking according to the word of God. You know, there are people who have faith in God, but they are no longer walking in the truth of God. There are people who have faith in God, but they don't live according to the word of God anymore. Because somebody has taught them wrong message. Are you getting me? Hallelujah. So, the faith I'm speaking about this morning is the second one. Is the faith to receive things from God. Is the faith to obtain things from God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to define that. But let, let first go to this scripture. The Bible says, Then, one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus. Now remember I said here, they're giving details of what Brother Matthew did not give us. But Brother Matthew, when he speaks about this story, he's not giving him names. But Brother Mark, when he's speaking about it, he's giving us more details. But I said, the one, then one of the synagogue leader named Jairus came and uh, when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. Learned to fall, to fall in the feet of Jesus Christ. Instead of falling in the, the feet of human beings. Mm -hmm. Verse, and then he pleaded earnestly with him. He pleaded, let to pray earnestly until you see things happening. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hand on her so that she will be healed and live. Jairus knew without any doubt that if you come to my house, you put your hand on my daughter, she shall be healed. Amen. That's what she, she was, believed, was believing. That was he has as a belief. That was what he has as trust. Probably, there were people who spoke to him. Or maybe he heard things about Jesus healing people. Because for sure, this was not the first event of Jesus healing people. He heard about it. He created a certain trust in him. He told him, I trust. I have faith. I have confidence. If you come to my house and you put your hand on my daughter and pray for him, she shall be healed. And she shall live. You see, I like what happened. The Bible says, Jesus did not answer. The Bible says, so Jesus went with him. He did not go with him because he was the leader, one of the leader of the synagogue. Because there are certain people that he resisted. Remember in the time of Lazarus, they called him, he resisted. They said, send the message, let him come now. He resisted. But this guy, this guy, he came, fell on his feet and said, I believe if you come to my house, put your hand, shall be healed. So actually, what moved Jesus, it was the trust that this man called Jairus had on him. That if you come and put your hand, and he moved Jesus. Listen to this. True faith will always move God. True faith will always move God. That's what Jesus said. If you have faith, you'll tell to this mountain, move from here to the other place. Because faith will always do what? Move God. And when God moves, everything else follows. Hallelujah. So when God moves, everything else follows. God, when he moves, everything else follows. This man, Jairus, and indeed, he moved to Jesus. Jesus started moving. Motion. Motion. Now, there can be 
motion without progress? Yes. They can be motion without progress. Faith does not only make God in motion. It makes God to progress towards you. The Bible said, God, Jesus was going to the house of Jairus. Now, let's go to verse 36. Look what happened to him. On verse 36, there was many other things that happened on their way to the house of Jairus. We spoke about that. But in verse 36, no, start with 35, 35, 35. Something happened to him. Something happened to the motion of God. Every time faith will move God, be careful. There are something that, remember, your faith, oh my God, your faith is the fuel, is the petrol that God put in his car so that he may move toward your problem. Your faith is the petrol that God put in his car to move towards your problem. So as long as he hasn't reached your problem, continue to put that petrol. Am I making sense to somebody? Yeah. The Bible says, while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus. The synagogue leader. Look what they said. They said what? They said, your daughter is dead. Your daughter is dead. They said, why bothering the master to come to us? He said, take back your petrol. There is no need for you to continue to keep the picture for the master to come to the house. We, he could have only healed the daughter when we were sick. But now that he is dead, she is dead, there is no longer possibility for him to come. I'm going to come back to this. The Bible says, Jairus, he heard those things from them, verse 36. Overhearing that Jesus, overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, because he was about to withdraw the, the, the petrol. He was about to tell Jesus, Jesus, thank you very much. Please, can I get back my petrol? You can stop here because my daughter is dead. Jesus looked at him. Oh, Jesus is so good. He's so marvelous. He told him. He came to him and said, don't take away your petrol. Come, leave the petrol. Let me reach there. He said to him, Jesus told him, don't be afraid. Keep your faith. Do not be afraid. Keep your faith. The guy was supposed to be disrupted by what he received. But Jesus said, keep your faith. Now, let me first define faith and then we're going to go back to this event so that I may explain to you. Now, in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, let's put this one in, in the fridge. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, the Bible says, faith is one a eh? confidence. It is a assurance. So the Bible is defining faith as a confidence. It means that it must come from you. Secondly, as a assurance. It means that it must come from somebody. Are you getting me? The confidence is in you. The assurance is from somebody. So those two things make faith. Now faith is a confidence in what we hope but for an assurance about what we do not see. That is faith. In short, faith is trust that we have in God. Faith is what? Trust you have in God. Faith is what? Trust you have in God. You see, brothers and sisters, when I speak about faith, I always go to this example. People are always, when you go, you want to travel to a very distance and you want to take an airplane, what do you do? You go buy your ticket. And then the day of your traveling, you just go. Lately, I traveled to, uh, to Cape Town. I actually flew to Cape Town. I went to the airport. I left my car in the airport. I went to the, to the airplane. I entered the airplane. I sat. I sat. Put my bag. I did not even go and ask, uh, please, can you give me the license of this pilot who's going to, to flew us to Cape Town? Let me see first if he is qualified or if he's not drunk or if he's... I didn't even check that. You know what happened to me? I slept in the airport. We flew, 
I slept. Until I just said, Then, uh, we are going to land in Cape Town. And uh, I never landed. I went out. My heart did not really go. I was trusting the Bible. Brothers and sisters, do you know the story that has happened to a Europe country? There was a pilot who was piloting an airplane who was dropped. What he did, I don't know, he just went and crushed everyone. It's because they trusted the pilot who was drunk. They trusted the pilot who was drunk. If you are able to trust that pilot, when you go to Pretoria and you want to use a taxi, you don't ask that taxi driver to show you his, uh, his driver's license. You just eat that seat. Why don't you ask him? Why? Because you trust him. Now, when it comes to God, maker of heaven and earth, when they say, let trust God, they start asking God, what did God did before for me to trust him? Well, your heart goes, why are you, you see the very same trust that you put in the pilot, just divert it now, put it in God. Are you getting me? Yeah. The very same trust that you put to the driver who's taking you to Pretoria, divert that trust, put it in God. That is trust. You see, you trust him without asking him. Why do you want to ask God? Anyway, you know my God is ready. He's ready to answer all your questions. If you want to ask him what he has done before, he will tell you. He will tell you that in the den of lion, somebody trusted him. He closed the mouth of the lion. He will tell you that in the furnace of fire, three people trusted him. He went together with them. He quenched the power of fire. Amen. He will tell you that there was a woman who was more than 90 years menopause two times. Amen. Shrinked uterus. Doctors who are here, they know. When you do not have female hormones anymore, estrogen, what's going to happen? Even the uterus shrinks. It becomes like a baby's uterus. So you cannot carry a baby anymore. But that woman trusted the Lord. God gave that woman a baby boy. Amen. Isaac. That you are praying, God of Isaac. I, do you know where that Isaac is coming from? He's coming from that God that you are doubting. Oh. He opened the Red Sea. Red Sea. The sea. The sea, my brother. He opened the Red Sea. People passed. They were looking. I believe the people were just entering in water and then coming out. That God, he made a wall of water. People back through. This is the God. He's a God who made heaven and earth. He's a God who's waking you up every morning. Amen. Who's giving you back the breath of life. Amen. How come you cannot, how dare you cannot trust him? How dare you cannot have faith in him? How dare you can doubt him in him? How dare you can even have doubt? You can, you know, doubt is an insult to God. Amen. You are telling him, God, I'm doubting because I don't believe you. Despite everything you have seen, you don't believe God. Despite all the miracle God has done, you don't believe God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, faith is the trust that we have in God. Faith is an attitude. But faith is also a lifestyle. Oh my God, let me say it again. Faith is an attitude. Faith is not only a trust. Faith goes further. It becomes an attitude. A person who has faith, he carries himself in a certain way. A person who has faith, he carries himself in a, in a way that uh, he is having joy now. When everybody else is crying, he is rejoicing. You ask him, ah, in the midst of this situation, you are supposed to cry. Why are you smiling? It is because I have faith in God. It's an attitude. Faith is a lifestyle. In the midst of everything, I will act like everything is okay. Amen. Are you still going to work? Well, I'm going to work. Oh, in this kind of situation, other people will kiss God. Amen. The woman of, uh, of, of Job said, kiss God and die. Job said, what? How come? I cannot kiss him. I will continue to live like if everything is okay. Attitude and also lifestyle. The way you live your life shall show that you have faith in God. When people are telling you, I'm not afraid, everybody's running, is running away to Cape Town, their business are. I said, no, I'm not running there. I will stay here and
until God will tell me where to go. Amen. I don't trust where people are going. I trust God. Amen. How many people have left Rastelman? They say, let's go to another city because their life is good. When they arrive there, they've been calling me every time, Pastor, please, here is so. I say, come back. You went there without God. Do not move if God does not say shall move. It doesn't mean because other people move that you work that if you move, God work. You are not those people. You don't know the allies and the covenant these people have with God. When they move, you don't know what God told them. Hallelujah. Amen. Every people were running away. They are going to Egypt. But I said, God told them, don't go. Stay in the land. Plant in the land. People saw Isaac planting. They asked Isaac, it is dry. Everybody else is running to Egypt. How come you are planted? God says you plant. He planted, and the Bible says his crops yeah. produce hundred false times. That why, my brother, do not follow people. Follow God. Amen. And trust in God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So faith is a trust, is a lifestyle. Yeah. Faith cannot be big or small. Faith is faith. They came to him in the book of Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. They came to him and they said, Master, why would you not? We were not able to chase away your spirit. Jesus said, it's because we have a small faith. And he said, indeed, if you have a faith as small as a master seed. Do you know the master seed? The master seed is half of a peanut. You know the peanut? So the, 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 the master seed is half of the size of the peanut. He said, if you have it small like that, People are waiting to have big faith. No, God does not need you to have a big faith. He just wants you to have a that small onion, that master seed faith. He said, if you have faith small as a master seed, you can say to this mountain, you see, already. So you just need faith. Faith is a trust. Now, what you need, you can have more trust or less trust. But trust is trust. If you trust me, you trust me. But you can have, you trust me, Mara. God doesn't want you to trust him, Mara. He wants you to trust him fully. He wants you to trust him completely. He wants you to trust him with all your heart. Now, listen to this. This man, let's go back to our, our, our Israel now. Jairus told Jesus, my trust, I trust that if you put your hand, it shall be healed. What do you trust that God can do? What do you trust that God can do? Until which level do you trust? For Jairus, he believed that if you put your hand on my daughter, my daughter shall be healed. What is your trust? What do you trust that God can do in your life? What do you trust that God can do in your family? That he can do in your marriage. He can do in your business. He can do in whatever you're doing. The Bible says that trust that Jairus had moved God. True faith will always make God in motion. As I told you before, it is, a, it is a, a fuel that you put in God's car to come to your problem. But they are enemy of faith. The enemy of faith or the enemies of faith are called realities. Somebody say realities. Yes. Say it again, realities. Yes. Jairus and Jesus, they were walking despite whatever was happening on the road. When they were about to reach the house of Jairus, Jairus saw people coming from his house. They said, oh, they don't even talk to Jesus. Your reality will not, is not going to dare talk to Jesus. Your reality will always talk to you. They came to him, oh, but Jesus was there. They could have spoken to Jesus directly. But they went to, last, they went to, to Jairus because they went, they, their aim was to kill the faith of Jairus. The aim of your reality is to kill your faith. The aim of what you see is to discourage you. The Bible says, they told the Jairus that do not bother the master, leave the master. Leave the master. Your daughter is dead. Your reality is what you see. If you trust what you see, you will kill the faith in you. It is not because you are seeing it that it is the only thing that is. Your reality is not the only one that is. Beyond your reality, there are some other things. Your reality is not the truth. The Bible says, when they came to him, they said, do not bother the master. Do not bother him. Your daughter is dead. Beloved, how many times you got discouraged because of what you see? Because of the reality? Because of the doctor's 
report. You are still trusting. I'm going to have a baby. I'm going to have a baby. No, no, no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Until you receive the report of the doctor. The doctor said, Madam, you will never have a baby. And then all the joy that you had went away. Why? Because now you choose to believe the doctor's report. Somebody tells you all oh, this kind of qualification. You never find a job in South Africa. You see your, 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 your qualification here? Yeah. Never. Maybe if you go to Zimbabwe. But here? Yeah. Never. Why are you discouraged? Because you see your reality. Somebody tells you, you see, the, the kind of beauty that you have, you never get married. No woman will like you. No man will like you. Those are just reality, my brother. I like Jesus. Jesus came to Jairus. He said, do not be afraid. Believe, believe. Do not. He wanted to tell him, don't believe them. Believe me. Continue to have the same belief that you had with, before you to receive the reality that you are seeing now. Let me tell somebody. Continue to have faith in God. The faith that you have before you to, get, to be in that reality where you are now. Maybe you are in a reality. Something is tormenting you. You are in certain things that you are asking yourself, is it going to be possible for me to go out? Continue to believe. Jesus told them, do not kill your faith. Do not allow things to kill your faith. Do not allow the reality to kill your faith. But trust me. Now you ask me, Pastor, why would you trust God? Let me give you quickly four reasons why would you, 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 you should ask, you should trust God. The first reason why you should trust God, Jeremiah 32 verse 17, God said, is there anything too difficult for me? Is there anything too difficult for me? The first reason you should trust God, because there is nothing which is too difficult for God. There is nothing too difficult for God. There is nothing too difficult for God. The second reason why you should believe God, you should trust God. Luke chapter 18, verse 27. Luke chapter 18, verse 27. What is impossible to man, it is possible to God. I like the version, the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation says this. What happens humanly impossible is more than possible with God. It is more than possible with God. What do you think that it is impossible? They came to him and they told him, your daughter is dead. People told him, Jairus, she is dead. Ushwili is dead. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing. You know, people will confuse you. Here, there is nothing. Mama, Mama, change. You know, we had a lady here in the church. I was myself a witness. When the doctor was telling her, or telling the husband, he told the husband, my man, your wife, we did everything. We did scopies and everything. She will never have a baby. Please go and adopt a baby. Don't adopt. I, I was there. I was here with my own ear. That doctor said, go and adopt. Dr. Ramos, do you know Ramos? Told that our sister. Go adopt the baby. I told him, who, who do you think that you are? You are human being, you're a God. The brother went on the wall, wanted to collapse, said, brother, let me live. Believe in God. Couple of months later, after the after the, the condemnation of the doctor, that woman became pregnant. Yeah. Here, she, she testified here. And as I'm telling you right now, that lady that the search cannot carry a baby, she is on a third baby. Yeah. A third baby. But the doctor yeah. said she adopt. Beloved, do not believe the declaration of man. Do not believe the reality. It's just a reality. God has the power to change that reality. Amen. God has the power to change the reality. Amen. Somebody say, God, God has, the has the power to change my reality. Change my God has the power to change your reality, my brother. Amen. God has the power to change your reality. Amen. No matter how dark that reality can be, no matter how difficult that reality can seem to be, God has the power. Why? Because what is impossible to man, it is Possible to God. The third reason, God's word is trustworthy. God's word never lie. Amen. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 9. Amen. And Psalm 19 verse 7. God's word never lie. Amen. Those who trusted in him before, they've never been put to shame. So God is not going to start with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The fourth reason why we should trust in God. We should trust in God because uh, he who made their promise is faithful. He is faithful. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. He who made the promise he is faithful. Amen. God is
is faithful. You know why God is faithful? He is faithful because if what he promised you cannot, he cannot do it, he can create it for you. Amen. If he does not have it within, he will create it for you because he is Elohim, the creator. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why, my brother, choose to believe the testimony of God or the word of God than believing your reality. Your reality will always be against what you want to see happening. Your reality will always be opposite of what you want to see happening. It doesn't matter. But choose to believe. Amen. Your belief has the power to change your reality. Amen. Your belief has the power to change your reality. Your belief has the power to change your reality. Now, let me finish. Faith does not make things easy. Faith does not make things easy. It makes things possible. Are you getting me? Faith, it doesn't mean because I have faith, I'm not going to go through tough time. I know through my tough time that it is possible. No matter how difficult it can be, no matter how painful it can be, no matter how challenging it can be, no matter how shameful it can be, I know at the end I am the one who's going to be the winner. When you are fighting on the, on the battlefield, they can give you a punch, they can give you an uppercut, they can make you, they can give you a wound. But as long as the, 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 the fight is not yet finished, as long as the referee haven't said that it is over, you shall not give up. The referee is on your side. The referee is your God. The referee is your God. If you want to make things happen, have faith in God. Have faith in God. At the end, God is going to favor you. Faith doesn't make things easy. Faith makes things possible. Faith doesn't make things easy. I'm going to tell somebody, maybe you're about to abandon because it's too difficult. You can't take it anymore. It's too difficult. Nobody is, is understanding you. You know, at work, everything, everyone is against you. Don't worry. God never said that because we have faith in God, things are going to be easy. But he said those things which are difficult, they are possible. Amen. They are possible. Amen. Somebody say, faith, faith. Does, not does not make my things easy, my things easy. but it makes them possible. possible. It makes them possible. Your husband has been praying for another husband. is not changing. Like, hey, sh let me change. That wife is not, hey, let me change that wife. Don't change yet. Because it is possible. Your faith is busy in the process. It's taking the raw material so that you can make it the form that you want. Give it a bit of time. It is working. It is in the process. It's going to happen. If you want to make things happen, you must have faith. You must trust God. You must have Patience. You must have that attitude. You must have that, uh, that lifestyle must change. It will happen. Listen to this. God always honors faith. God always honors faith. God always honors faith. God always Honors faith. When faith is presented to God, it is impossible for God to not honor it. That's why every time he healed them, he said, your faith has done you well. Your faith has done you well. In other words, your faith has allowed you to receive that gift from me. Not me. Your faith Ask yourself, do you trust God? Do you trust God? Do you trust God for your trust, the doctor's report? Do you trust God or you trust what you see in your body? Or you trust the sonar or the CT scan or the MRI that they did from your knee and they said this knee is completely gone. It just needs a, a, a knee replacement. Let me tell you, you have El Shaddai who can replace that knee. They told you that 
you are going to be taken out of work. And you start telling yourself, yeah, you know, in this company, they say they want to take you out. They'll take you out. Listen, you have God who's above them. Amen. Your God is above them. Amen. The Bible says he's having the heart of great people in his hand. And he takes them on the left or on the right according to his own will. The will of God is for your good. Remember Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Amen. I know the plan I have for you. The plan, right. the plan to prosper you. To give you a future. Can you rise up on your feet? I hope your faith has been lifted up this morning. I hope your faith, it is enough now to move that mountain. Your faith is enough right now to put that Goliath down. Your faith is enough right now to accept to go into that dead or lion where they want to throw you. Your faith is enough right now to accept to go in that furnace of fire where they want to throw you so that you may demonstrate to them that you have a living God. Amen. God is God and God is your Father. Amen. He is your Father. He is on your side. God Amen. is not against you. He is for you and he is with you. Amen. Look at your faith now. Remove the doubt. You have been doubting God that is an insult to him. Don't doubt him anymore. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Lord, I trust you. I trust you. Remember, faith is a trust. Yes, faith 
is the petrol, is the fuel that makes God move to my direction. That makes God move to my direction. Faith is a fuel. He is the energy that makes God move to my direction, to my problem, to my issue. It is possible. It is not yet late. It is not yet late. Faith makes things possible even when the world says that it is late. Faith made things possible for our mother Sarah, who was already very old, but faith of Abraham made things to become possible. Is it possible for you? That job, you'll find it. You'll find it. It is possible with God. You'll find it. It is possible with God. You'll find that visa. It is possible with God. You'll find it. It is possible with God. What is impossible to man? That degree, you'll get it. That contract, you'll get it. That contract, that post, you'll get it. You'll get it. You'll get that healing, that healing. You'll get it. It is possible with our God. It is possible. Let's pray together right now. Say, Lord Jesus, pardon me. Forgive me. For every time I chose to trust my reality instead of trusting you. Forgive me for all nights that I spent complaining, crying because of my realities. I did not trust you. Lord, forgive me. This morning, I have decided to put my trust in you. In your word. I decided to bring you my faith. To bring you my trust. Today, my faith is making things possible. It's making things happening. It's making things happening in my life. In the name of Jesus, my faith is obtaining for me things for me, things for me in the market of the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus, I will see them, I will palpate them, I will enjoy them by faith in you and in your way. In the name of Jesus. 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 Do you believe that things are happening? Do you believe that things are happening?